Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today is a very special day because we're going to get to see how plastic models are manufactured. We're going to get the inside scoop from Archon Studio. Archon Studio is one of the leading producers of polystyrene sprues for models and terrain. They're probably best known for their Dungeons and Lasers and Rampart lines, but they also produce minis for Conquest, Gale Force 9, The Army Painter, Idols of Torment, and more. Minis can be made from a whole bunch of different materials, and they all have pros and cons. As a hobbyist, my favorite material to work with is High Impact Polystyrene, also known as HIPS. This hard plastic is great for the mass production of models, and it has a lot of advantages. Pieces made from this plastic have a ton of detail. It's relatively durable, but it can be easily modified by cutting, scraping, or sanding. HIPS will partially dissolve in organic solvents and this is actually an advantage. Plastic cement melds pieces together, and this is a great option for when you're gluing polystyrene models. The big trade-off for polystyrene is the setup cost and the manufacturing process. First, the models need to be split into pieces that will cast well, and they need to be keyed so that those pieces can be assembled into the final models. Next, bits need to be laid out on a frame. Once the sprue has been designed in a CAD program, CNC machines can begin carving the mold into a solid piece of aluminum. It takes a CAD instrument about a week to carve the top half of the mold, and about the same amount of time to carve the bottom half. Once the mold is ready, the engineers fine-tune an injection protocol. This machine will inject molten plastic at the correct pressure to fill every corner of the mold. It takes a lot of work to get all of this tooled up and calibrated, but now it's ready to make a whole lot of plastic sprues. Manufacturing the first sprue is very expensive, but each injection after the first one is cheap. HIPS only costs a couple of dollars per kilogram, and it only takes about 30 seconds to cast each sprue. The marginal cost of each additional shot is only about one dollar. I'll stop talking now and let Jarek, the CEO of Archon Studio, tell you how it works. You'll also get to hear the sounds of the factory. Okay, that's the plastic injection machine. Uh, we have a few of them. That's plastic pellets. They are supplied white and we are dyed The uh, machine takes the material when it needs. When the material goes into the drying station, uh, we need to dry the material to remove all the moisture off of it. And it goes down the bottom here to the chamber. So in the um, in that chamber there's a screw but also there is a heating element which melts the material uh, the screw is there to generate pressure to inject material into the form this is, we call this form it, in general it's a plastic injection tool there's a few stages in injection machine so that is a closing stage now it's injection stage when the material is being injected those cracking noises we hear this is the diesel effect so it means the material goes in, expand, the, expand inside, pushing out the air and compressing the air when it actually make a small, tiny um, explosions. <clears throat> right, now is the cooling stage. This is the moment when all the plastic is being cooled down. Now is opening stage, removal stage, and this is how we're getting sprued. So, here we have. Jarek was really generous with his time and his expertise. We're going to share as much as we can about each step of the process. Polystyrene comes as white pellets, but color pellets can be mixed in. Gray is a very common color for models because it's easy for our eyes to see, and it also looks good on camera. 2% color pellets to 98% white pellets is a common mixture. Something else they can add to the blend is recycled plastic. Miscast sprues can be ground up, mixed with fresh materials, and reused. The relative dilution of the old colors makes this work out just fine. Okay, so no material has been wasted. Um, these sprues here, which they have some defects, um, they are being grinded in this machine. So we have a grinding machine, which cut them in a small tiny pieces like that. And here we have example. So the fresh material, uh, which is with dye, and also regrinded sprues. 
now we had maximum we could potentially at maximum 20 percent however um, at this stage because we don't have that much waste material we're looking at maybe five percent of material that is regenerated material now it doesn't change color so the red pro remains or yellow one does not affect the final col color at all that's pretty cool there are colors from the recycled sprues in the new mix, but those are dilute enough so that the fresh color palettes are able to completely overpower them. On a related note, Archon Studio also work with clear plastic and clear colored plastic. Clear polystyrene is often more brittle, so the folks at Archon Studio are proud of this new blend that they've figured out. It has a bit of flex to it. So I'll be telling you our secret sauce today. Our secret sauce to make beautiful um, plastic clear um, spruce with no proper properties lost so um, obviously the dyeing agent in some cases might affect the material properties and we found out at the beginning when we start uh, working with the clear plastic is was that pure uh, dyeing agent was actually causing material to be quite fragile um, so we needed to find some work around and we managed to do that so Obviously, we can make this in different colors. We can make them even in metallic. So that's the gold uh, tournament tokens from uh, Master of the Universe uh, Battleground. Uh, that's a sample sprue being made in the um, metallic um, bronze color. But going back to the clear plastic, right? This is the uh, dyeing agent. And it's, as you can see, it's just basically sprue, which was um, printed on our machine in here so we made sprue with a normal two percent of two percent of uh, dyeing agent which became extremely extremely blue non-transparent material and then we cut in a small pieces and then it's mixed with material on the machine to get this simple and here we have it this is material so the clear plastic is obviously clear and what we added in is just two percent of spruce which are cut in small pieces like that. and we get this the plastic is heated to more than 200 degrees celsius by a heating jacket and the shearing motion of an internal screw this is higher than some other common thermoplastics and it's one of the reasons why working with hips requires fancy tools these machines are also dealing with very high pressures, up to 100 atmospheres of pressure. The injection takes less than a second, during which time air is forced out of the mold and the internal cavity is completely filled with plastic. The longest interval is the cooling period, after which ejector pins push the fresh cast out of the mold and the tool is ready for another shot. The sprues are specifically designed to make sure that the hot plastic flows into the channels the way that it's supposed to. The plastic is injected from the center. The position of the bits, the angle of the runners, and the number of gates all affect the flow of material. Hi there. Let's talk a little bit about the sprue design. Um, this is one of the latest sprue uh, for Dungeons and & Lenses Encounters. And that is the layout. So, um, we have three golden rules. Um, before I talk about them, a little bit of definitions. Uh, that's the part cavity. Uh, that's the runners and the gates. The gates allow material to be transported from the runners inside the cavities. Okay. So we have three golden rules. Uh, first one is the shortest way. Uh, second one is degassing and quality. And the third one is the sprue balance. The shortest way means that material get injected in the center point uh, we use just one point injection um, that's the point and the material needs to travel inside the runner through the gate inside the part in the shortest way um, the reason for that is material when injected is extremely hot it's around about 220 degrees celsius and once it starts traveling inside aluminum tool it will lose its temperature rapidly, which means further we go from the center point, uh, lower flow properties it will have, which means my cause are several different defects. So we have always have to make sure that the, um, there is a shortest way of material, travel material. 
uh, the gaussian inequality means that um, when it comes to um, injecting material inside the cavity we have to make sure when the material flows inside it will push the air out outside right like that so what does it mean it means that we need to make sure that whenever we place the gates they will allow for material to go in and the air go out goes out otherwise we might have a risk of uh, trapped air inside like here for instance if there was no that gate here and that would cause uh, several different uh, defects so collapsing material or unfilled cavity so that's important along with that one is also quality which means that we have to place the part in the way that when we add those gates in it won't damage or affect in any way the quality of the part so the gates won't be exactly in the places where it's like crucial detail for the miniature or so on and the third one is the sprue balance um, sprue balance basically means that uh, we have to make sure that left to the right side of the of this sprue from the injection point those cavities or the material which needs to go inside inside those cavities are exactly the same same weight my on the other side and the reason being that if we fill in that side of the cavity faster quicker than the other the other side of the cavity it might um, after filling that side it might actually clog the um, injection point which means then will generate back pressure causing unfilled elements on that side of the sprue so this is really three golden rules we always follow when we design sprues the molds are cut from solid pieces of aluminum. Aluminum is easier to cut than steel, but it's still durable enough to last for at least 100,000 cycles. The CNC machine starts with a relatively large 6mm drill bit to get the rough shape. Then it moves down to smaller and smaller drill bits. By the final day, it's using a drill bit with a 0.3mm diameter, or sometimes even 0.2mm. The smallest drill bit is actually what determines the resolution of our models. This level of detail looks pretty fine to me. It normally takes between 5 and 9 days to cut one half of a mold, and during that time the CNC instrument is running around the clock. Here's Jarek to show off the CNC park. That's the um, part of our CNC park. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here is the seventh one, CNC machines. And that's how the machines operate. So we have a aluminium block there on the machine and the cutter. We obviously program the cutter to do the job. Uh, currently it's doing a, a rough cut, so the tool is quite large. So we have a, a large tools, uh, small tools, finishing tools, and Usually we start with 0.6 millimeter tools and we're going down to 0.3. We have also 0.2. And just to show you how small they are, this is how small they are. So each of these tool costs around about uh, from 100 euro to 200 euro. And we use about four, three to four every time when we make a uh, plastic injection block. Most of the molds work well right off of the CNC, but about 5% end up needing some revisions. For example, gates may need to be added or widened to get the molten plastic to flow into every part of the cavity. These molds can be used for tens of thousands of injections, often hundreds of thousands. Over time, some scarring may appear in the mold as a result of compressed air being explosively forced out in the injection process. Here's Jarek with a brand new mold and one that's been through 60,000 cycles. Here we have a set of tools, brand new tools, um, nice and shiny, uh, they haven't seen production yet. This one ran it for about 60,000 shots so far, that's 6 zero. As you can see, you can see now wear and tear, not in detail, detail on the cavities, but outside the cavities. Uh, this tool is still okay to run production, and the quality is still the same as it was at the beginning, uh, just the outside shut off surfaces. Uh, they look like that. And this is actually what is caused by diesel effect. So it's basically exploding air, which causes this, um, this kind of 
black staining on the uh, on the aluminium. Injection molding of plastic is incredibly common, and tons of products are manufactured with this technique. Model casting is a bit unique because of how detailed and precise the molds need to be. Archon Studio makes a few hundred molds every year, and they make millions upon millions of sprues. The CNC machines work around the clock, and the injection molding happens for two shifts every day. Archon Studio employs about 80 people. That includes talented engineers, machinists, artists, project managers, and support staff. I've been a fan of the Rampart line and Dungeons and & Lasers for a while now, but it's only recently that I realized how many other companies hire Archon Studio to produce models for them. Archon sprues have a characteristic shape, and the Made in Poland stamp is the confirmation that a particular sprue came from this factory. The newer Conquest minis from Parabellum Games are made here. So are the plastic D&D minis from Gale Force 9, like Drizzt de Erden and his pals. Army Painter is making a Game Master paint set that comes with some adventurers, and oh my, this sprue sure does look familiar. I want to give a special shout out to Idols of Torment from Black Magic Craft. My pal Jeremy has worked with Archon Studio to get some of his minis cast in plastic. There are lots of materials for making minis. Metal, PVC, 3D printing resin, two-part casting resin, and CO cast are all pretty common, and they all have pros and cons. Polystyrene plastic has some big advantages over all of these. Durability, scalability, sandability, and glueability. As you can see from this video though, the big trade-off is that HIPS has a high initial cost for tooling. It's rare to see small independent games using this type of hard plastic. And that's why I'm so excited to see that some of the minis for Idols of Torment are available on a sprue. It feels like a real achievement for my buddy Jeremy, and it shows that Black Magic Craft is serious about supporting this game and making it big. I've been playing around with an early sample sprue from the Idols of Torment Kickstarter, and I'm having fun. I think these look great. You can never have too many models of peasants trapped in purgatory. But yeah. Archon Studio is making great minis for a lot of the games I care about. There aren't very many model manufacturers in North America or in Europe, so it feels good to support a European company when we can. If you've watched this channel before, you know that I love learning about materials and about how things work, so this video was an absolute blast to make. Huge thanks to Archon Studio for letting us into their factory and showing us how this stuff works. A lot of Archon Studio products have been sold through Kickstarter campaigns, but these Pathfinder Abomination Vault sets are starting to make their way into stores, so keep an eye out for them. And of course, there are the classic Dungeons & Lasers tiles. Oh, and this temple set is from the Rampart line, and it's pretty dang cool. Oh, and here are some cute animals who go on adventures. And, the Dungeons & Lasers line also has a set of dragons all in beautiful polystyrene plastic. I'm excited to see whatever they're gonna make next. Go ahead and give Archon Studio a follow, and thank them for letting us get a peek behind the curtains. This has been fascinating. Anyway, that's about it for this time. Thank you all so much for watching.